Okay, so this is my mid-2010 MacBook running the latest version of macOS, macOS Catalina, and, uh, and it's running really, really well. But what I'm also running, uh, and I've been playing around with this for the last few days, uh, actually, I don't want to shut down, I want to restart, is Windows 10. Now, this was a bit of a battle to get on here, uh, and a few of the methods I was following weren't properly working. So what I'm going to do is press and hold down the Alt key as I reboot. And I'll do it all in real time so you can see what happens. But uh, yeah, I, I've been doing this for a couple of days now and uh, I finally got it working. So if I press and hold the Alt key, uh, you can see that it comes up with the two different partitions on my drive. So I'm running a 240 gig uh, drive, which I've just bought recently from Amazon to be able to do this. Uh, and it's a great drive working really well. So you can see I've got Catalina here and I've got EFI boot. I'm gonna switch over to screen capture in a minute. Uh, so let's tap on EFI boot, which, my, which is my Windows 10 partition, and you'll see that it boots up nice and fast. Now, Windows 10 isn't uh, as nice to use with the trackpad. Uh, this multi-touch trackpad works incredibly well with Catalina. I'm actually using this mouse, and I bought this mouse for my Raspberry Pi 400, which I haven't got yet, but I wanted a wireless mouse. So if I click on it, you can see that it's working nice and well. And, uh, and Windows is working well. Uh, it's doing lots of updates because uh, I had to use an older version. So I've rebooted into Catalina because I wanted to use my screen capture, which tends to work better in that. Uh, and just to show you that dual monitor support is working, but I'm gonna switch over to my monitor as the main display so I can screen capture it at 1080. Okay, so I've managed to get screen capture working. I need to, for some reason, uh, select 720 to get my capture device working, uh, which is weird because uh, on 1080 it works absolutely fine on the monitor and it looks amazing. And I managed to select a color profile for this monitor and it, and it made the colors look so much more rich, but you're not seeing that, unfortunately. Anyway, let's show you uh, what process I had to follow to get through to this. So I followed DOS Dude One's method uh, and this is amazing. There's a whole website on this uh, and I'll put links in the description, but there's a tutorial video and I followed that through and actually everything worked fine. It just updated in the normal way and now it's running Catalina. So if I go back to the normal desktop, uh, you can see that new things have been added that I didn't have before. So things like Apple TV, uh, which wasn't supported before, uh, is now running on this Mac. There you go. And with the trackpad, you can see I move around lovely and smoothly. I'm amazed at the performance that this 2010 MacBook has. Uh, considering it's 10 years old, it's running software that it's not officially supporting and, and it works great. And Windows 10 works really well as well. So after I installed DOS Dude One's method, uh, I looked around and found a load of different videos. And the one that worked best for me was this one by Heads of Technology, uh, how to install Windows 10 without bootcamp on older Mac Pro via USB. So my Mac uh, only officially goes up to Windows 7. I've had Windows 10 running on it before using bootcamp, but I decided to use this method to see uh, if it was gonna work for me. So everything worked fine on the video, apart from when I got to this point, uh, because you can only download the latest version of Windows 10 from Microsoft. And uh, I tried that and I tried several other ISOs I had uh, and various different things and nothing would work. It would get to a certain point and it would crash out and loads of people in the description have had that as well. And I found out that really it's just because it's a much newer version of Windows that's available now. And so I ended up going to this site uh, and you can see in the uh, URL bar what site it is. And it, it gives you various different options to be able to download ISOs. So I picked Windows Final, I picked the version, and in this case I was using this oldest build I could find, September 2018, because I did try other versions in between and they didn't work for me. Uh, Windows 10, I selected English, uh, and then the file, I did the 64-bit, and, uh, and a download link comes up here. Well, in fact, I can do that. Uh, so download comes up here and I downloaded it. Uh, I then used NetBootIn. So I go back to the video now and, uh, and follow it from there. And uh, you're just using a, a different ISO to the one that's available from Microsoft. So it's an older one. And you can always update this after, so it's not a problem. Uh, but then I went to NetBootIn and downloaded that. This creates a bootable USB uh, which you can install Windows from. So everything else in the video from then on worked absolutely fine. 
apart from the bit that says download the bootcamp drivers, uh, mine are for Windows 7. So I need to look in more into that to be able to get all the drivers up and running. But what I think I'm going to do is just keep updating Windows and hope that Windows 10 will actually sort out the drivers itself as time goes on because there's many updates after my system. So I'm going to play around with it, but uh, I need Windows on there because I screen capture uh, when I'm writing Windows to Raspberry Pi. I need to have a computer with Windows on it. But I also do rely on Mac OS as well. Um, it, uh, it, it is a very good operating system, uh, very stable, works incredibly well with my iPad and my iPhone, especially now it's this later version. I've definitely noticed that the integration with uh, web browsers and, and uh, continuity from going from one device to another, everything just picks up incredibly well. So I will still run Linux on this occasionally when I need to, uh, but really Linux for me is going to be on the Raspberry Pi, so when I'm running Ubuntu and RetroPie and all those different operating systems. Uh, so I hope this helps. Uh, if you have an old Mac like this, I definitely recommend putting Catalina on it, maybe Windows if you need it, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy I've got it back up and running. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.